Okay, so I thought this week we could talk about finding quote unquote the one. Always an interesting topic and one that always has young ears ready to listen. Because yeah, how do you know? And is there actually a one? Let's start with a conversation I had recently with an older married couple at our church. They're actually newer to our congregation, but not very shy as they made the extra effort to stop me and my husband on the way out. I was looking at their beautiful white hair, smiles, wedding rings, and I was sure they had been married for a while, so I asked how long. The wife thought for a moment and said it was over 30 years. I said, that's awesome, and we're about to celebrate 15. Well, then somehow I got to sharing how God confirmed who my husband was and how we had that strong foundation to stand on at the beginning of our relationship. I also made the case that I wasn't any more loved by God than anyone else, and God is the same God. Therefore, God could show others too, right? She agreed and shared the scripture from Mark 10, 9. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. She said, the problem is there are many relationships that God didn't join. They didn't allow God to do that. Huh. That's true. Well, obviously, everyone doesn't choose to ask God to lead in that decision, though most Christians do, at least at first. But then, how often, when things aren't going as fast as you would like or how we had planned, we decide to take the reins back and say, oh, never mind, God, I've got this. Or what about when that cute, nice, fun, good-looking guy comes into your path? Are you really willing to ask God, take him away if he's not from you? It's hard to wait, and our flesh doesn't like to trust God. Oh, that flesh just fights us and says, just go where the heart leads. But the scripture actually says, which of course is God's wisdom and instruction to us, it says to beware of the heart, for it cannot be trusted. Trust only in God. But if we can get back in the spirit, we know God knows best, and his way, though it's harder, will bring an amazing outcome. You have to know God wants better for you than even you want for yourself. So are you going to listen to the world, the enemy, your flesh, or listen for God's voice to guide you? Okay, back to my college years. After I heard God's voice confirm who my husband was to be, there soon came the voice of the enemy who tried to creep in. I was just minding my own business one day, driving down the road and smiling like a fool about what God had done in working in our relationship and about marrying this amazing man when this terrible thought came to mind. I heard, if all these other relationships didn't make it, why would yours? And this terrible fear gripped me. Then almost instantly, God's voice of truth answered that question right back and said, because if I bring it together, I can sustain it. And the fear was released. Whoa, that just happened. Satan and God had a battle right then and there over me and over my mind. And you can see who won. Crazy, right? So yeah, you want to have God do the bringing together and he can sustain it. Well, then back to the other week after we talked to that sweet married couple at church, the hubs and I continue chatting about the conversation of how God can show you, well, for lack of a better word, the one. But some people don't think there is just this one person out there that you have to find, or the topic has a lot of differing opinions, right? Well, my hubby continues to say that it wouldn't make any sense for God to stay quiet and not tell you what to do in making one of the biggest decisions of your life. I agreed. If you want to follow God and you want what he wants for you, he will guide you and tell you. Now, that journey can and most likely will be pretty interesting because God is doing more than we know to help us to be the one we need to be as well. So I got to thinking maybe our focus is wrong on this topic of the one. In this type of talk, our focus goes to a guy who many feel like will make them complete. But truly, the one is Jesus. Only in him are we made complete. Now, I'm married and Jesus is still my number one. Always will be. So if I focus on Jesus being the one, now it's really about finding God's will in a spouse. And I do believe if you seek God, he will answer. And like my hubby said, it just doesn't make sense for God not to confirm and lead you in that if you ask him. 
So yes, you can know from God your Father. He is the one who is to give his approval of the joining together. You definitely want his blessings. And one last thing, you don't give your heart away to someone. God has your heart if you are his. Your heart rests in his loving, perfect, never failing, gracious hands. You aren't to give your heart to another. It's just that God will join your heart to another and make you one, still in his hands. Mark 10, starting at verse 8, says, And the two shall become one flesh, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. Now this week, I would love for you to write down what God teaches you from this and share it with others. You have good news to share. Don't keep it to yourself. And make sure and tag us in any of your posts. We would love to share how God is working in your life as well. And sweet GL4G, remember in your walk of faith to seek God with all your heart. Testify to his truth. Listen for his voice and be courageous in all you do. God bless.